Okay, so it's March. Thinking about some corned beef. Um, we're going to do a trial run today. I have, usually, we simmer it. You know, bring the water to a boil and then we simmer. But a lot of our customers have been talking about their crock pots and using their crock pots, which I don't use as often. So I figured, let me try. I'm going to do one in the crock pot, which actually I, I started this morning. And I put set it for eight hours on low. And then this piece I'm going to boil, um, bring to a boil, and then turn it down to a simmer in this large pot. Now, you'll see this piece is probably not as big as I would normally. Well, first let me talk about the type of corned beef that we would, you know, that we sell at the meat market. So the corned beef, um, for those of you who don't know, is actually brisket that has been brined in pickling spices. Um, and then it is cooked, um, or rather simmered in water, uh, for several hours until it's tender. Um, it's not for everybody, but those who love it, love it. In our house, we basically make it once a year. Um, my grandmother always made it. She made the Irish soda bread, and she made the entire meal. So we'll be making the cabbage, which um, I will cut into into wedge-sized pieces. Um, I'm going to be making some carrots, and I also have red potatoes, um, which I'm going to peel and boil. That's traditionally um, goes with the whole meal. This year, because again, every year I like to do it a little bit different, I'm going to try to put, in our house we're gluten free, so I'm not gonna use beer, but I'm gonna use a hard cider. People say that they throw a bottle of beer into their water when they're simmering their corned beef, so I'm gonna try it, but I'm using the um, apple, the apple cider, hard apple cider, which is gluten free. So in order to simmer your corned beef and to give it enough space, you need a very large pot. It needs to be filled with water. Um, I have it filled just till about here, um, but actually you can see it came down a little bit after it started boiling. And then we're going to put that piece of corned beef in there, let it simmer. It's going to simmer for two and a half hours. At the two and a half hour mark, I'm going to put in my vegetables because this dish traditionally has boiled vegetables, whether it has boiled potatoes and boiled cabbage. The carrots I'll cook separately. Um, so you want to make sure you have enough water so there's space for everything. Also, the corned beef can't be jammed in a small pot, otherwise it will not cook right. Um, and again, you don't want this boiling for the entire time. You bring your water to a boil, you put your meat in, bring it back to a boil, then bring it down to a simmer. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take this piece. to grab it and pop it all the way into the water and then it's going to float around and you'll see there's lots of extra space in there and then when the water starts to boil again I'm going to turn it down to a simmer okay so the water you'll see is back to a boil so I'm going to put my bottle of hard cider in there and then I'm going to turn it down down to a simmer so basically a simmer will probably be on a medium heat so anyhow, corned beef and cabbage is traditional to, um, to many families. I am a little bit Irish. My grandfather is Italian and Irish. And so my grandmother, who happens to be pure Dutch, would always make this meal for him. And um, actually, Anthony and I used to go, and she would make it for us, and she made the best Irish soda bread. So that's the recipe that I make at the store. There are very few recipes that I don't share, but right now, that's kind of one that I do keep. It's, it's special to me, and it happens to come out really good. So maybe, maybe eventually I'll share that one. Um, but anyhow, today we'll do this corned beef. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just gently peel up. I'm using red potatoes. I kind of think when you're boiling them, they come up nice. They're a little bit less starchy than Idaho. So we'll just peel them like this. And since I'm going to put them in in the half, last half hour, I think I'll cut them in half. I guess if you were gonna do it a little bit longer, 45 minutes, maybe you could leave them whole, um, which would also be nice. But I think what I'm gonna do is, I am just going to just cut them right in half. Just once, like that. And I'm doing a bunch, just because um, we're gonna feed five people with what we're making between the two pieces. And I always like to have leftovers because if I'm cooking, then I think it would be nice to have lunch or dinner tomorrow too. Okay, 
So generally, the cabbage, I will peel off the outer layers. And then what I prefer to do is, I prefer, um, you know, it is pretty clean on the inside, but what I will do is, I will usually wash it in the colander after I have cut it. For me, it's just simpler, and then I know that it's clean in between all of the pieces. And I'm putting it in the water anyhow, so it doesn't matter if it's dry or not. So just like that. This piece is garbage, you won't use that for now, or you can compost it if you have a garden. And I generally make these pieces like that, like squares. You could slice it, I guess, if you like. It all depends on, it really is, to me, you do it how you like it. And then I'll take these loose pieces off. And then again, all of these pieces I'm gonna to put together in my colander and I'm gonna give them a really good rinse. Okay. So, these carrots are really fun. And they come with the, the top still intact and they just look really pretty when you put them on a platter. I guess if you were juicing, you could probably use the tops because I'm sure there's a lot of vitamins in there too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to give them a rinse first and then I'm going to use my peeler and then just gently peel down. Let me give them a quick rinse. So I'm just gonna peel these like this. And then again, when you put them, I usually do these in a saute pan, that like a deep saute pan, and I just hang these over the edge, make sure they don't catch the flame. Um, but they make a nice presentation on the table, they look pretty. So that's how I think I will leave them. So anyhow, in the meanwhile, um, we have our corned beef simmering, and then I think in a little bit, I will slice up the one that's been in the crock pot and uh, give it a taste and see what we think. It's simmering away. I'm testing this because this piece was smaller than I would generally use. Um, so I am, it's at the two hour mark now. I think it might be done at two and a half hours. So I'm putting my vegetables in now. When you make your piece, it all depends on how many people you're feeding. You might have a large, if you have a larger piece, definitely give yourself three hours. So, um, so then you'd put them in at the two and a half hour mark. But like I said, I am going to be Putting my potatoes in here. I'd like to show you, this is usually what I use, it's a big fork to test the doneness. Um, so you'll be able to, when you can really just sink the, the fork right into it, it's done. So it still needs um, a couple minutes. Now I will also grab my cabbage and I'm going to put my cabbage in here. That was one head of cabbage. Goes a long way. Now also I wanted to show you the carrots that I was um, peeling before. And this is what I mean by I put them in a nice deep saute pan and then I just hang the greens over the edge. And I'll fill this up to here with water. Actually I'll probably do that now.